Next on Worcester News Tonight, Powwow Worcester kicking off their third year tonight in downtown. What's in store for the days ahead? Plus, UMass Memorial Medical Center remembering those who have lost their lives to drug overdoses and the message they want everyone to hear. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. The getaway to the last holiday of the summer has already begun and it's expected to be busy on the roadways over the next couple of days. The Massachusetts Department of Transportation is advising people to plan ahead if traveling this Labor Day weekend. MassDOT says people should exercise safe driving by minimizing distractions, driving sober and obeying the speed limits. All scheduled roadway construction will be shut down for the Labor Day travel period tomorrow at noon and will start back up on September 4th. The MBTA released they will be operating on a Sunday schedule Monday. MassDOT suggests visiting www.mass511.com for travel times and traffic alerts. A Barry woman has a run-in with a fleeing suspect early Thursday morning. Police say they tried pulling a man over for speeding the night before, but he got away from officers. Our Cam Jandro has the story. Christina Paquette brought her daughter to the school bus around 8.30 Thursday morning. When she went back into her house, there was a stranger in the living room. I went into the laundry room to put on some clothes, and I opened the door and I saw a gentleman sleeping on my couch. The man, 28-year-old Tyler Johnson, ran off. Eight hours earlier, police tried pulling Johnson over for speeding, but he got away. I observed the mail party stick his head up, and he opened a back passenger door where he was, and he took off on foot. Officer Zachary Martirosian says the department received information about a man running through the area the same time Paquette called 911. So we moved our perimeter a little further down south by a road towards Main Street. Three of us, we took up a perimeter inside the woods, and then uh, the subject was subsequently located. Paquette says she saw police searching for someone before she went to sleep the night before, but she was stunned to find Johnson in her house. Well, I was just taken back, and I, you know, oh my goodness, and was it the guy that they were looking for? Or? Officer Marta Rosian says Johnson is from Connecticut, where he has a lengthy criminal record. He now faces multiple charges here. He identified himself as a Mr. Gary King out of the Bronx in New York. He, you know, furnished the false name, so he's also, you know, he got charged with the stolen motor vehicle, and he also got charged with furnishing the false name. Paquette is glad the situation wasn't worse. Had, had, uh, I went back to bed, and he thought no one was home, and then, say, he found me while he was awake, he could have attacked me, who knows. Cam Jandro, Worcester News Tonight. UMass Memorial Medical Center remembering those who have lost their lives to opioid overdoses. 1,909 purple flags lined the field outside the medical center. They represent the lives lost in 2017. Organizers say it's to raise awareness and to stress the importance of getting people into substance treatment. They say the hope is to remove the stigma around the epidemic. I think the, the biggest thing is just kind of getting the conversation started. I mean, one of these flags, that could have been your neighbor, your mom, your sister, your coworker. So getting the conversation started, um, in terms of prevention and awareness. It's never too late or too early. If you've identified that you have a problem with uh, alcohol or drugs, uh, that intensive treatment is really uh, the way to go and uh, uh, give it a shot. Tomorrow, the Worcester Department of Health and Human Services will host a candlelight vigil of memory and hope in recognition of International Overdose Awareness Day. The city's Cannabis Review Committee have advanced 24 recreational marijuana shop applications for the possible 15 licenses available. The city says those who are still being considered have held their required community outreach meeting and submitted an application. The committee will now go through the applications. They could only select one or all 15 to then enter into negotiations for the community host agreement. The city's planning board unanimously approved the city's first permit for the sale of recreational marijuana Wednesday night to Good Chemistry. Worcester's coordinator of international intergovernmental affairs and municipal initiatives says it's a process they take seriously. Because they already had a site, because we already knew them and were comfortable with them, uh, we kind of went ahead and said, that's fine, you can, you know, and that'll count towards the total of 15 that we'll need to allow for overall. The Cannabis Review Committee is going to have police 
fire, inspectional services, law, um, planning, and the city manager's office. This isn't a one-person decision. There's going to be a lot of vetting that goes on. The deadline for the applications was on Friday, but Sanders says the city may be open to more applications in the future if they don't fill the 15 licenses. Powwow Worcester is back for its third year in the city. You've probably noticed the artwork and murals by now, and Worcester is about to get more colorful. Our Rosalind Flaherty joins us now live with more. Rosalind? Anna, artists are coming from places like Japan and Greece to paint their creations, and once the festival's over, 100 murals will be completed in the city. A new flag flies at Worcester City Hall, celebrating Powwow Worcester's third year of bringing art to the city. Starting Friday, artists from all over the world will paint their creations on city walls. To attract new residents, new young employees, they want to live in a very vibrant, interesting place, and public art is one way to do that. This year's theme, More Than Walls, will have 35 artists painting and creating sculptures. This is a great way to get people out, explore the city, see beautiful artwork both on the walls and right in front of you on the ground. Last year, the International Arts Festival attracted more than 2,000 people to the city. Pow Wow says the murals have put Worcester on the map. We've had artists come from Brazil and from Spain and Berlin, and they don't know Boston, but they know Worcester. And they know Worcester as the arts and cultural and creative hub of New England. And that's, that's more than we could have hoped for. By the end of the festival, Pow Wow artists will have painted 100 murals over three years. The organization says they never would have expected this much community support to keep the art going. It's been exciting every year to see it um, and to see people wave at us and, and honk when the flag went up. It's been, it's been insane. Now, Pow Wow starts tomorrow and runs until September 9th. For a full list of events, you can visit their website. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. Switching gears now, a Northboro man is now charged with a gruesome murder in Worcester. Prosecutors say 57-year-old Stephen Foley killed a woman, then left her body in the trunk of a burning car. The victim's body was found in Hope Cemetery last December. Our Chandler Walsh was in court today for his arraignment and has more. Stephen Foley is arraigned in court Thursday. The Northboro man, a level three sex offender, is charged with the murder of Cynthia Webb. On December 12, 2017, did assault and beat Cynthia Webb with intent to murder such a person. The 59-year-old's body was found in the trunk of a burned car in Hope Cemetery. Foley had pled not guilty to charges of burning a motor vehicle and malicious damage to a motor vehicle in connection to the case. According to court documents, the two met at Mario's showplace in Webster the night before Webb's body was found. Webb was working as an exotic dancer. In court in December, prosecutors said surveillance video and witnesses placed the two together at multiple locations. The defendant is seen getting out of his vehicle, getting in the victim's vehicle in the driver's seat, and drive them away. Shortly down that street, they have uh, a further surveillance that shows that they pull into a gas station. Prosecutors say Webb's car was seen heading toward Hope Cemetery in Worcester, where it was later found on fire. This man's friend's daughter is buried near where the car was found. He says it's a sad situation. Because, you know, I got family members that um, I buried, you know, and I wouldn't want that to happen. This is a place for peace, not to come and kill somebody. She didn't deserve that. No human being deserves that. Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. Tonight, state police are working to identify a body found on the Mass Pike in Auburn. The body was found around 10 p.m. Wednesday night on the westbound side near exit 10. Police are still trying to figure out how the person died since there's no overpass in the area, no vehicles were left behind, and there were no reports of anyone walking on the road. Anyone with any information is asked to call state police. Members of the Worcester Community Labor Coalition holding a press conference in front of City Hall Thursday to fight for economic and racial justice. The gathering held just be days before Labor Day launches the coalition's Worcester Works campaign. The campaign is advocating for access to good jobs to stop the wage theft, community benefit agreements, and for the city jobs to reflect the people of Worcester. 
The coalition says with the announcement of the Pawtucket Red Sox moving to Worcester, this conversation is even more important. We're saying through this Worcester Works campaign that we have collectively come up with is that we want to make sure that the economic boom and the renaissance is something that is equitable for all people. We're going to do this by ensuring that our public construction, city hall and all of our school departments actually reflect the diversity of our city. Um, we're going to do this by making sure that we're fighting wage theft and we're going to make sure that we have signed community benefits agreements that are tied to all future projects that give back to the community and not just corporations. The coalition says in 10 years, the Worcester Works campaign will transform wage gaps between genders and race. Members from the Carpenters Union, Central Massachusetts Housing Alliance, and city leaders were all in attendance. Worcester's last remaining Jewish jelly is now in the hands of a local real estate developer. Weintraub's Delicatessen has been run by David Mizrahi for 30 years. Developer Edward Murphy says Mizrahi is still there until he can find a new owner. The business has been in Worcester for 98 years. The goal is to have someone who will keep the shop the way it is. Uh, I ask a lot of people if you can name five good delis in Worcester. They can't. Um, so we think there's an opportunity there for that. Murphy says he's been meeting with potential clients but hasn't found the right one just yet. If you've bought or sold a house in Worcester County, you've probably dealt with the Registry of Deeds office. Next year, a new register will be taking over, and two of the candidates are currently Republican state representatives. Our Olivia Lemon has the story. Two state representatives are running against each other for a different position in September's primary election. Republicans Kate Campanelli and Kevin Kuros are vying for the Worcester County Register of Deeds seat. A lot of people don't realize that the Register of Deeds uh, is even an elected position. So we spent a tremendous amount of time uh, going door to door. You're implementing these visions, this new leadership. And I think that's something that the, the registry needs right now. Incumbent Anthony Vigliotti announced he was stepping down in January after holding the position for more than 40 years. Both candidates say they have big plans if elected, overseeing real estate transactions across more than 50 cities and towns. I think the systems can be a lot easier to use. And then I think a big thing that we need to do is more outreach. Updating the website so you can get all of this historical information to real-time data. And both say while the position is some may not be aware of, they understand how important it is. I'm looking to bring what I've learned as a rep to the registry and implement some of these ideas. You need someone who's going to be able to you know, hit the ground running and, and, and take the baton and, and run with it. That was our Olivia Lemon reporting. The primary is Tuesday. Democrat Catherine Toomey is also running for the position.